Malcolm, I'm going to start, if that's all right, with just talking a little bit about yourself, yeah. which we're also going to move on to State of Mind and, and the fantastic um, work that I guess everybody does as, as well as yourself. You, you, you chair State of, State of Mind, but I think without introducing you properly, it would be an injustice to, to what you've achieved throughout your career. How did you get involved with, with mental health? I became a mental health nurse. Uh... When I was 18, prior to that, I wanted to be a footballer. <laughs> Not quite good enough. Me and Bobby Moore were a lot pace, <laughs> but he had better judgment than me. Um, so I worked in the, in the health department um, as a junior clerk. And um, I think I met some social workers who were mental health orientated. And I think some people thought I had some potential. I had two favourite aunties who were nurses. And uh, I, I went into mental health nursing without knowing too much about it. And that was in the middle of the 1960s. So I did mental health training and loved it. Uh, then went on to do my general nurse training um, and worked locally as a, as a charge nurse staff nurse and then the charge nurse and I went to work in Manchester in my first sort of leadership management role made some good connections some good networks then I moved to Wigan uh, as a senior nurse officer and director of nursing and uh, I worked there for seven years and loved it I, I really love Wigan people I like the way they talk uh, I like the diet <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that stage, um, we're going to just started to take off about 19, when was it, about 19, uh, early 80s. And um, I had a friend uh, who um, de developed a, a depressive illness. And um, he um, or, uh, went to the same church as us. And, he, and the minister said, but I'll spend some time with him. And I found out that he was a um, rugby league fan. He'd uh, brought up in Wakefield. And as a schoolboy, he used to go with his mum, not his dad, to watch um, Wakefield Trinity. And in the early 60s, they were an outstanding team, I believe. And he used to go to Wembley. And he was in the film, uh, that uh, the famous rugby league film, um, starring Richard Harris, Rachel Roberts. I'm just trying to think. Of yeah, you're going to stump me if you ask me for the name of the yeah. film. Uh, this Sporting Life, I think it was. I think that's right. And um, he said that he was in the film and alongside him he had cardboard cutouts as, you know, as, as fans. So he was experiencing depression. So I am trying to find out you know, what is him to swear and trying to exteriorise and get himself out of... Uh, of, of being insular and, and self-focused. Uh, um, and we went to watch um, Wigan and uh, enjoyed it. So went back the following week and uh, both took our daughter. So I got hooked, brought up in Preston. Uh, it's a Preston North End fan. Um, follow a great footballer called Sir Tom Finney. <laughs> and um, over the years, I still watch North End, but over the years, rugby league has eclipsed soccer. I just prefer the excitement. I like its roots. I like its values, everything yeah. about it. The fast-flowing game. And, of course, uh, 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 watching Wigan and, and watching a successful team has, has added to it. All my family go. Uh, so that's been a real strong feature. Um, so when we got involved, when we set up, state of mind it was a marrying together of two passions yeah mental health and uh, and rugby league okay one, one thing that I, I thought before i met you and this is the first time that i've met you obviously malcolm uh, that you would be the type of person that would just completely ignore your achievements so you you've got an obe which is incredible and, and the fact i wanted to ask you that question to see whether you mentioned that and i think that perhaps in the 30 minutes that i've spent with you so far probably sums you up that you don't even mention that the fact that you've got an obe and i think that's a credit to yourself okay. uh, what was um just receiving that did you get it from the queen did you get it from prince charles what, what was that like on, on that particular day mm, nerve wrapping nerve wrapping uh 
cracking occasion. Um, great for one's family. Did help my self-esteem at the time. When you get it on, you I'm very lucky really because it's many people deserve it and never get one. But I had a number of champions, people who put my name forward. But the best thing that about about getting uh, an honour was you receive so many messages and cards. So you you hear from people saying positive goodwill things yeah. that you wouldn't have been aware of. I've often thought in life we only say positive things about people when they leave or, or, or when they die. Yeah. So I was fortunate to receive a number of kind and goodwill messages that was a real boost to one's confidence and, yeah. and esteem. So, uh, but the, the main thing was I was, it was for my mum uh, and my wife who, and, yeah. and my daughter who have been you know, very supportive. Uh, never said this publicly before, but uh, I was, uh, my mum was a one parent family. So it meant a lot, you know, to her really. Yeah working class lad and uh, I was uh, given some recognition for a passion that I enjoyed anyway. But so you, you've had obviously a, fan, a lot of research that you've carried out, you've worked with as a mental health nurse for a number of years, you receive yeah. an OBE in, in, in 1996 and I guess continue the, yeah. the work with mental health since then yeah, and then yeah. obviously yeah. there was the incident in, in 2000 and uh, 10 when, yeah. when Terry Newsom yeah. passed away and yeah. I guess that was a trigger for state of it mind. It was, it was. You remember in doing, doing your research. <laughs> how, yeah. how, from your point of view, how did state of mind come about? How was it your idea? Were you approached? And, yeah. and how did that grow from, yeah. from the back of Terry yeah. Newsom? Yeah. Um, my wife was sat there and I was here and we were lamenting and feeling sad about Terry's tragic death. Joyce was a fan of uh, uh, of Terry's and she said we've got to do something about this so I wrote to the two rugby league weekly papers and simultaneously Ernie Bembo another Wigan fan yeah. he worked in uh, HR in, uh, in the health service he simultaneously wrote a letter uh, about um, players should be players welfare should be a prominent feature and um, another lad called Phil Cooper, who's now Dr. Phil Cooper, a nurse consultant in Five Boroughs, he contacted Ernie and I, convened a meeting with one of his colleagues, and we thought, well, what should we do? What can we do? So we thought we might have a conference. And uh, and Brian Carney and Terry O'Connor contacted us, teammates of, of Terry Newton, yeah. and they gave us encouragement, inspiration, and open doors for us, both within the game of rugby league and uh, within the media, both Sky TV presenters yep. uh, by now. And that gave us, you know, rubbing shoulders with our heroes, that lifted us as well. And we sparked each other off. And then we progressed, started adding to our, our number, contacted local people. Um, I think it was uh, Brian made connections with the RFL Phil went to a meeting of all the league chairmen and we tried to point out the benefits of looking after um, the welfare and the mental health needs. Lots of focus on physical fitness, but less so on emotional uh, fitness and resilience. And we uh, were given encouragement to, uh, to do a session with all the Super League clubs, so the RFL deserve a lot of credit for um, enabling us to do that. I remember we trialled it at Witness uh, with their players because we wanted to get it right. We, we said 40 minutes, the limit. We needed to respond to, uh, to take the education, the awareness training to the lads. And one of the features of, um, uh, of, of fans is that mental health services are often unattractive and, and not always available. So we recognise that, so we made it easier for the players to come. 96% of the players have never had any uh, training or awareness uh, sharing information around the mental health and, and wellness in their lives. That's all, nearly most of them. So we pitched it 
uh, at the needs. Um, so we used to do it often after training when they were together. And I can tell you, at every event, there was nobody getting looking bored. They were all engross engrossing it. So we tried to turn the negative into a po into a positive. Since then, we 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 moved on to championship clubs, community clubs, and increasingly, we deliver um, um, talks to um, schools, colleges, universities, the workplace, construction industry, the um, blue light emergency services and talks to police, ambulance and fire and rescue. And I think one of the success factors is that we have the credible ex-players talking about their life experiences, getting Danny Schoolthorpe, six foot five, putting his hand up and saying it's a strength, not a weakness to seek help carries a lot of conviction, a lot of credibility, more than a healthcare professional like myself. But alongside that, we have the healthcare professional who can bring their expertise around. So we've got this fusion of the ex-player and now ex-referee with Ian Smith and healthcare professionals working together. And we use language that we hope blokes will uh, respond to and understand, like help a mate, like um, setting goals, making ground, offloading, and all of these are important in tackling stigma. We also deliver lots of our sessions in stigma-free environments, like sports clubs. Uh, at, uh, uh, in the offload programme we're doing at the minute with Warrington and Salford Reds and Widness, we deliver the sessions in the dressing room. Oh, what a lure that is! For blokes to come, yeah. and um, we did a session in again in uh, in, a, in a socially economically deprived area. This was again in, in Warrington, where we we call it the boot room project, and we advertised it in pubs, in chip shops, in barber shops, uh, where blokes go, and uh, we said that. Um, we're going to show four classic films on certain dates. And some of the players who took part, they, um, they um, said they would come. So that, again, that was a draw. Yeah. They brought the medals as well. And Phil Cooper opened the, it up by um, asking them, how do you deal with anxiety, the nerves before the game? Which is a subtle way of getting into talk, people talking about anxiety and depression. And we had about 35 to 40 at each of the four events. And that was featured on Panorama. Uh, did a programme two and a half years ago about male suicide because there's real concern about it. And at the end of the programme, in the last five minutes, about what could be done. And rugby league, the state of mind, was uh, uh, described as uh, a novel but an important way of reaching, targeting men and doing something positive about preventing suicide and promoting uh, health and well-being. So State of Mind started in 2011 after the, 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 the sad death of Terry Newton and seven years on you, you, you only need to look on the, the website to see the growth mm. of State of Mind, it's been absolutely incredible from from this, I guess, initiative initially yeah. targeted at rugby yeah. league players, like you yeah. said, yeah. it's now yeah. targeted at anyone really, it you is. know, yeah. to, to make um, awareness of, of mental health issues. You've got States of Mind Rugby Union, States of Mind yeah. Australia, it's, mm. it's growing into a global mm. um, charity and initiative. From one thing that I want to pick up on is, as Wigan Fan TV is focusing on fans and focusing on. And awareness and reaching this out mm. into it's not just about the rugby players but yeah. seeing your heroes mm. and seeing the, these people talk is. about this yeah. you know it has an effect so you know what can we do as fans to, mm. to promote awareness of mental health mm. is there anything that we should be looking out for mm. or you know yeah. and, and what is it that's that um yeah. state of mind promoting in, in particular yeah. at the minute yeah well one of the um major uh attributes of the Game of Rugby League and State of Mind, in partnership, we've developed an annual campaign where the RFL 
uh, devote one round of fixtures uh, devoted to, to, um, uh, to state of mind and um, the players warm up in our t-shirts we meet with the uh, the, the um, we meet with the fans who come into the game and try and engage them in conversation and we've had some real magnificent success stories where people have come and said this was to be the last game and they've come back and told us you know that talking to to us or one of our volunteers uh, it made the difference and we give out information cards around the theme this year it's going to be offload last year was loss the year before the theme was change and adversity and Willie Isa he featured in in that and talked about coming from the other side of the world and having to deal uh, with those um, pressures and we hope the fans will be able to relate to it its strength is the applicability they listen to the players and then they apply it to their own life and three years before that it was uh, reaching out to uh, to, to others, looking out for others. So it could have been a fan sitting alongside you, or it could be a colleague at work. So we go for a, a theme each, each year, and we try and reach the fans, and utilizing the power of sport and, and the, the players um, to at least um, engage the fans, and then perhaps get the fans to think about things or do things differently so the initial focus was on players but now it's largely a focused on fans and rugby league communities uh, in most where rugby league is played rugby league club is probably the, the central isn't it to many people's dna yeah they say that in wigan uh, babies don't learn to toggle they learn to sidestep <laughs> and women uh, don't queue them it down the blind side so most rugby league communities are, are, are fond of the and it's almost iconic status hasn't it in its local club and that's what i like about rugby league a lot of the players come from local communities they've not like a, a lot of super football premier league football clubs are just mercenaries they lose that connection with the community that's one of the values i like about about the game so we utilise that power of sport to raise awareness amongst the fans, tackle stigma, encourage people to seek help. Uh, and oh, it's all about uh, uh, promoting um, wellness and preventing suicide. Mm. In, in terms of the future for State of Mind, the, obviously mm. the, the growth over seven mm. years, I guess, is perhaps is. way beyond yeah. you would have ever have expected back, yeah. back in we've 2010. The, at the minute, we've de delivered our awareness room to about 38,000 people. Wow. And last year, linked to each round, each campaign, is we uh, the players act as our ambassadors. And last year, through social media, through tweeting, we give the messages to the players and then they tweet them and then they retweet it. We estimated we reached 8 million people. Oh. That's fantastic, isn't it, really? The power of social media. For an idea that started in this yeah. very room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just out there. Which is incredible, yeah. and the amount of people. Mm. I mean, one thing that I, I said to you um, earlier was about, I think a lot of people are aware of State of Mind mm. and, and, and the name yeah. of it and the association yeah. with rugby, but I think, how can we as fans engage more with the charity yeah. you know yeah. is it like you said engaging in the initiatives yeah. each year so offload this year yeah. encouraging people to to talk mm. is, is there any advice that you would give um to to fans that that, yeah. that, that might be might yeah. not be aware that they're struggling or yeah. might not be aware that their yeah. friends are perhaps struggling yeah yeah well certainly look at our website there's some fantastic information on there about where support's available and hopefully we will have on the website different activities this last couple of years and we want to do it even in a better way this year is to have a time to move campaign so the round i think is around the 14th of uh, of june um this year and in the week leading up to it we're going to have a time to move uh event emphasize the importance of exercise on mental health there's lots of evidence now 
that it um, releases endorphins, makes you feel good about yourself, self-esteem. Often doing it with other people. It doesn't mean being a marathon runner, but you know, sort of uh, walking or exercise on the spot, building it into one's into one's life. So fans might want to join us in that time to move. Last year, or last year but one, we we walked between from Wigan to St Helens to Warrington to win this, you know, to Warren. It was about fifty miles, a bit stretch over stretches really. Yeah. So we we wised up after that, and people might want to walk a mile, they might want to walk sort of ten miles. So we're we're planning that. So fans might want to enjoy the uh, uh, join us in that. This year, the the fixtures I think we're gonna away, um, but um, uh, for other fans, we would hope that they would come to us. Uh, and talk to us or our volunteers at at the at the game, and engage us in conversation. Also, we we want it to be a two way street. We want to know from fans what else would uh, be helpful to them. At uh, the minute this year, we we're, we're hoping to um, uh, to have a song. Greg Mulholland, who was the MP for I think Headingley, lost his seat. In the last election, he was the chairman of the Parliamentary Health Select Committee, and we gave a presentation last year. And he was so moved and inspired by what our team had to say that night. He 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 he, he went away, and he he was so inspired. He's written a song. So what we're, what we're looking for at the moment is to get it recorded. It is first class. It's inspiring the the words that uh, that is chosen. And at the minute we're we're exploring how best can we fund uh, getting it recorded and they would have that on our website some of the guys who are engaged in our offload program they'd probably join the choir uh, and we would hope to use it um, at, uh, at the launch of this year's um, at, at this year's um, campaign round so uh, in summary I would say we would want to know from the fans how best what what's missing oh another idea I should have uh, mentioned we're producing some guidelines some simple straightforward guidelines on key issues like sleep players tell us that they can't sleep after the game I wonder why adrenaline sometimes legal stimulants before and you know the mind's still racing away we're producing guidance on depression, on anxiety, on resilience, uh, on gambling, and uh, we've got uh, two people at the minute working on the benefits of food, appropriate food and mental health, and we'll convert to diet and nutrition into, uh, into a guidance. And that's gonna be aimed at fans, but we'd like to know what other issues, what other themes would people like a uh, state of mind to to give a focus to as part of our uh, task and mission in in promoting mental fitness and uh, and wellness. Um, anybody that has ideas, I should oh, get, get in touch through the website yeah, and social so. media and that. Yes, usual. We'd, we'd love to hear. If I know there's you know keen on uh, there's a a Wigan fan unfortunately took his own life. Um, um, Few months ago and his wife as part of a legacy for him is organizing an event in in Aspel and she's keen to to raise funds for state of mind when when you lose someone to suicide you you have the the grief of a bereavement of losing someone but then super if it's a suicide um, superimpose on on that sense of, of loss and great sorrow or a a turmoil of emotions. If I'd only have said this, or I wish I had to have said that, or if only I'd done something. So it's extraordinary. Uh, on on top of losing someone, when it's a, a suicide, it's extraordinarily difficult for those left behind. So this lady is is doing something about it by organising this event um, in in April. And another initiative we're hoping to do is to produce some guidance on bereavement and particularly 
um, supporting people who have been bereaved and we're going to train some volunteers so that they can um, support family or, or colleagues. It's not just the immediate aftermath, sometimes it's months later yeah. when it really hits on birthdays or special dates. So we hope to engage perhaps one or two fans who might want to volunteer and be trained up uh, uh, to, to, to carry out that role. We're always looking for supporters to help us raise funds. Yeah. You know, so people have got lots of strengths. And I have to say that people who volunteer live longer, particularly retired people. But when you're giving life, you get it back. And um, it's one of five ways of well-being is giving. So if anybody wants to get engaged with State of Mind, get in touch with us, we'll snap your hand off. Malcolm, I think, um, honestly, I, I came here not really knowing what to expect and obviously to do an interview about State of Mind and to raise awareness, but I can honestly say in the past hour that I've spent with you, I, I've been inspired by, by you as a, as a person, how passionate you still are about mental health and, mm. and something that you've dedicated your life to. And, and, and I think what what's really insightful about this is that people can see the person that you know, oh. right behind it, yeah. the, the initial thought in this yeah. room and the development yeah. to where it's at yeah. now. And I yeah. think from from all Wigan fans and all rugby fans, I think firstly would say congratulations yeah. and well done. Well, you're very uh, kind, but I, I, I wouldn't want you people, um, the viewers uh, and the fans just to think it's myself. I've got some fantastic associates and um, I've been sparked off by other people. I've been yeah. inspired by other people and hopefully once this video goes out and we'll put it as a podcast mm. you know if this inspires one other person mm. to get involved then, then mm. that's that's been worth it yeah, so well, that's a fantastic uh, way forward i'm really happy with that. so um one of the big things that that's happening this year in, yeah. in rugby league is the, the development and, and the mm. growth of, of women's super league mm. obviously su um, state of mind has been targeted at what is now, I guess, the male yeah. Super League. Yeah. How are you planning yeah. on, on the, the development into yeah. women's Super League? Yeah, I'm really pleased you've asked me that. <laughs> um, you're right. Um, um, the new Super League uh, team and the, uh, the ladies, the women playing, uh, will have extra pressures. They'll have uh, pressures within their, um, their ordinary everyday life and then there'll be pressures about combining... Um, uh, being a sports person and uh, we're very keen to share the learning from our initiative with others who might want to do something similar with uh, with women uh, rugby league and we are keen that we don't dilute the male orientation because that's part of our success that ethos of of, of reaching men so we'll need to have a separate message for, um, uh, for, for women. So we want to support them in their endeavours, utilising the power of sport to raise awareness and to support people. But secondly, in, uh, in our quest in supporting blokes, um, we recognise that women are the best enablers of the men in their life to seek timely support and encourage them to seek help. And that's a really important message. We can't emphasize enough. That if you're going through tough times, if you're struggling, if it's sort of dark times, go and talk to someone. Um, and and, uh, and it doesn't need to be a specialist, just offload into a friend. Um, and, and that, as Danny Schoolfork tells us, and Phil Vivas tells us, and Ian Smith tell us, that the key for their recovery was offloading to other people. Um, increasingly, we are um, being invited to uh, to give talks um, in um, at the in the workplace. We've given talks to uh, to various blue light um, organisations. But in society, the most at-risk group at the moment are construction workers. And um, we have uh, just uh, been engaged by Costain. They're showing great enlightenment because they recognise that um, 
stress in the workplace, anxiety in the workplace can impact on performance of individuals. It can, if it's done properly, we uh, having a healthy work environment where staff feel valued and supported can reduce sickness and absence levels. It's so it's cost effective as well as in humane terms being effective, reduces turnover, it can ensure less accidents, less complaints, less litigation down the line. And I've recently come across a term called presenteeism, where people are at work but not functioning to their optimum level. So it makes commercial sense as well as, as I say, in humane terms. So if any of your viewers would like to uh, ask the State of Mind team to come into their workplace to share our thinking, you know, we'd be gladly uh, consider that. And again, it's part of our quest in reducing stigma. Stigma's a killer. Stigma gets in the way of people seeking help. So we take the message to wherever they are. But linking it to um, um, to the workplace, because what? Work can be very positive for us. It provides a structure, satisfaction, connections with others. But sometimes, if you um, get stressed at work, it can cause anxiety, stress, and then and then lead to depression. So, a healthy work environment with a, an enlightened employer providing opportunities for the staff to have training in stress busting techniques or having safe places where they can offload or have time out for 10 minutes or whether it's playing table tennis or yoga or mindfulness all of that is an investment for a, a progressive employer